Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, and you can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Calvert, and welcome once again to the Father Joe Podcast. The Father Joe Podcast is proudly supported by Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 Mile Road and Telegraph in Southfield. The Spring Savings Sales event is going on now, but only until May 31st. Star Lincoln has added incredible one-time only dealer incentives that most likely will never be repeated. Check out these additional incentive enhancements available to all current Lincoln and Ford owners. You'll get 2,000 additional savings on the 2019 MKZ. You'll get $1,500 on the 2019 MKC, $500 cash back on the 2019 Nautilus, the hottest SUV on the road. And coming in any day, it's the all-new Lincoln Aviator, the star of the North American International Auto Show. In a hurry? Shop online at StarLincoln.com or call us. 248-354-4900. Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 Mile and Telegraph in Southfield, home of the Star Treatment. Our good friend, Father Joe, is still unable to be with us today, but good news, he'll be back with us on Sunday for Sunday's podcast, and man, oh man, wow, is he anxious to get back to work. Saw him a couple of times this week so far. He's doing great. He received a new hip less than two weeks ago, and he's doing fine. Said to say hi, doing physical therapy twice daily, getting stronger every day. So on today's podcast, I decided we're going to take you back to one of my favorites. Yeah, being a little selfish here, it was the day that Father Joe informed me that of all the hats he wears and has worn, I never knew he was a cop. Now I asked him, did they call you Father Joe or Sergeant Joe or an aggregate of both? But let's just take another listen to the Father Joe podcast, a classic from Father J- Sergeant, Father Sergeant, uh, the Father Joe podcast. Watsonville, California. His name's Grimaldi, Father Joe Grimaldi. He's a distinguished, well-educated Catholic priest. He was once a cop. And this is his story. So I'm telling Father Joe the story about my lunch where I see the cops. And then all of a sudden, from nowhere, thought I knew you pretty well. You tell me that you were once a police chaplain. And this happened where? Watsonville, California. What was your rank? (laughs) Just an ordinary chaplain. Did you wear a uniform? It was a uniform, but it was not the same uniform that the police wear. Uh huh. Um, you know, you had a special shirt with insignias on the sleeve, and also a crosses on the oh, uh, no, collar. Yeah, sure. Um, but basically, uh, the duties of a chaplain are more than what people think. Okay, you you take for example the city of Watsonville. Where's Watsonville? Watsonville is, uh, if you ever buy strawberries, that's where they're from. Oh. Uh, Driscoll strawberries and all of those. But it's right in Central California. He's making me hungry. Uh-huh. <laughs> but Central California, basically. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but it's not too far from Salinas, huh? Salinas is Steinbeck country. And yeah. So Salinas is where it's the lettuce capital of the USA. Watsonville would be strawberries, Gilroy would be garlic, mm-hmm. let's see, artichokes were Castroville. So these are the places that are famous for these different types of foods. In any case, Watsonville's a small town, the town itself, but mm-hmm. it's wide in uh, the extensions, if you mm-hmm. want. But we only had less than 100 people on the force. That's still pretty good size. Yeah, uh, well. It's small, but it's still, you yeah, know, right. 100. I mean, when you consider in Honolulu, we had 2,200. Yeah. That's, well, <laughs> that's a lot. That's, that's a good, so, si- good size for us, yeah. Yeah, so in any case, very often you would... Well, wait, wait, wait. How did you become a cop? I want to know how you became a cop. So it's, you're in Watsonville. Yeah. All right, you've, um, you're on... Pastor top. of the church. Oh, okay, so you're the pastor of the church. And so the police come to see me. Mm-hmm. And they say, you know, we need a chaplain. Okay. And the chaplain, I said, what does a chaplain do? 
I mean, at first you might think the answer is pretty obvious. Not always, though. A chaplain, first of all, is to help build up the morale of the policemen themselves. Because, let's face it, very often they have marital problems because they work long hours. Mm -hmm. The wives are waiting for them at home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they show up on time. Other times they don't because of their work. Right. Um, This leads to disagreements. This leads to separation and so on and so forth. So it's a matter of being there for the policemen themselves as they go through these different phases of their life. So it could be family situation. It could be illness. But you're there for them. The other thing, too, very often... You might ride along with the police as they go through the troubled areas, particularly when you have to go into a home where there was some disturbance of a husband beating a wife. Domestic violence calls are apparently the worst that police have to respond to. Exactly. And They're so, the most dangerous. You, don't, you do not know what the situation... No, you don't. ...how it's going to be resolved. So they want... <laughs> They want a chaplain to go Mm -hmm. along, too. So basically, you're there to uh, bring peace if there isn't peace there. A chaplain, too, is expected to go to the home of a person who's just lost their son or their daughter because of a criminal act in the streets or whatever the case might be. Very often, the chaplain has to deliver the bad news Mm -hmm. to the parents who have lost a son or someone in the community. I once had an interesting chase experience, if you want. I've oh. often wanted one. You know, you yeah. see it on TV. Lights and, and siren, like lights and sound, as they exactly, say. Exactly. Bells and whistles, good Bells stuff. Bells and whistles. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things they do when you ride along with the cop, uh-huh. who does this on a regular basis, yeah. he knows the areas that are troubled and, and those that are peaceful. And so once I was with them, and there was a big hill, so we parked at the bottom of the hill and he said to me i don't want you coming up for this the next thing i see the cop is and i'm looking in the back window but i could see the cop running over the fence into the front door through the house out the back door coming around the house chasing this guy Mm -hmm. because he was wanted for other reasons besides what happened in watsonville so it was kind of an interesting situation to do that. You sometimes have to work with those who are in prison. Uh, I, I say in prison, in jail, because before they go to prison, of course, they're in jail. So you talk with them instead of to them. The work is challenging. The chaplain has to be available, too, for all of the funerals that occur of the policemen themselves. Very often, as you see on TV almost every day, one of the officers is shot himself. And so you're there for the funeral, you're there for the family, you're there for the kids, all of these things. And so a chaplain serves a lot of purposes in a unit, if you want. I, I don't think people are, are aware of the fact that's an area of the, the priesthood that uh, I found it fascinating that you, the last thing I knew about you was that you were a police chaplain. Did you enjoy it? Uh, I enjoyed it, but yeah. it's also very time-consuming. Yeah, but it, it also had to be some fun at times, right? Oh, sure. Right. Yeah, you're interacting with the officers and things of that sort. And, of course, I'm speaking about uh, Watsonville is somewhat rural, mm-hmm. except for the city itself, right in the middle of the city. It's not so rural. It's not New York or even downtown Detroit. Okay, let me explain a little bit about Watsonville. It was inhabited years ago by Croatians and the Irish. And they uh, came from Croatia and from Ireland as yeah. farmers. Now, these, through the years, they were able to get degrees, you know, from Polytech in California and uh, agricultural type work. And sure enough, they succeeded. Now they own a lot of the farms. You oh. know, we speak about the Irish, well, Driscoll, strawberries and raspberries and all the berries there are and so on and so forth. But you also have the Croatians. Huh? Maybe they don't have the same name, but they own a lot of the farms. So now, Watsonville was built for people like that. And then, once they have become successful, they moved into the outskirts of Watsonville oh, okay. and built their beautiful homes in 
the suburbs of yeah, Watsonville. The, yes, no suburbs, but you know, in <laughs> yeah. the beautiful area, it's in the mountains of Watsonville, the Santa Cruz Mountains. By the way, that's the name of the range. Is the Santa Cruz Range, okay. and so many of them live in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Now, what happens to Watsonville? Have a bunch of small homes, and they're inhabited by Mexicans and South Americans who came to work the farms. So today, when you go through Watsonville, nobody speaks English in Watsonville. They speak Spanish, mostly. And the small homes are all owned by Mexicans or South Americans now, because the Irish and the Croatians are in the surrounding area. There's a beautiful big church in the middle of the town. You know, in the old days, that's the way they built these little towns. Mm -hmm. Big church with two spires. Beautiful. Sure. Beautiful. Yeah, nice. St. Patrick's Church. Uh -huh. However, it's now San Patricio. And so, so. <laughs> it's interesting how <laughs> times change. <okay? laughs> but it's, uh, it's a uh, wonderful church. Uh, so you uh, certainly don't live there and work there without knowing a little bit of Spanish. You have to preach in Spanish as well. But it was kind of interesting. You know, it's funny uh, because there are certain things about you that I don't know. Can I ask you this? What other odd jobs as a priest? Well, I don't know if they're odd jobs, but uh, basically... I mean, something... Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I was what they call a vicar general. Uh-huh. And a vicar general does the dirty work for the bishop, huh? Okay. So basically, you to go to the priests that are misbehaving and work with them and so on and so forth and read them the right act as well. I mean... You also take the phone calls that nobody else wants to take. <laughs> uh, people complaining about Father So-and-So. Father So-and-So did not kneel during the consecration. He should be reprimanded. Come on. I said, really? now, wait a minute. Yeah. Father So-and-So is yeah. now 88 years old. <laughs> if he showed respect and bowed to it. And besides, why don't you go see Father So-and-So himself and direct your question to him? But anyway... Uh, these are some of the questions that would come in. They were ridiculous. Also, we would get questions about uh, exorcisms, you know. Really? But usually from non-Catholics, which was interesting, because they had seen the movie. And every time they showed the movie, the next day we would be inundated with all sorts of phone calls about exorcism. Yeah. One made me laugh like you wouldn't <laughs> believe. This poor woman who's Japanese said... My sister-in-law was visiting. She stayed in this room, and ever since she she left, the doors keep opening and closing. <laughs> the, the, the light. And then when I said to her, Madam, before we send an exorcist, we really have to have a psychological evaluation. Would you be willing to go through that? Mm -hmm. You never heard from that person again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Because that's a serious topic, but, but uh, yeah. So, so anyway, this is what the vicar general gets to the do. The vicar general is like number two for the uh, diocese. And okay. The diocese of Hawaii is unique because how, it's all those islands. Right. How long were you the vicar general? Uh, six years, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And then judicial vicar, which was head of the tribunal, uh -huh. uh, I dealt with all the marriages that go south, okay. annulments and things of that sort, as well as... It was really at the height of uh, scandals, so I was involved with that stuff, too. How close do you think you came to becoming a bishop? I have no idea. Oh, come on. That's all secret. <laughs> really? Really. You have no idea? Listen, I can just imagine. I was vetted and turned down. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, but I mean... You've done so much that you certainly that your qualifications are more than there. Oh, my experiences are great. I, I, mean, I mean, how many bishops can say they're a cop? How many people <laughs> can say they have five degrees? <laughs> you know, and that's because I could never get anything straight, so I have to keep studying, keep studying, keep studying. So I have all these degrees. Let me ask you this. I don't want to say the happiest time. Within the Catholic Church, what was the best job you had? Yeah, I don't want to sound Pollyannish, but the thing that was really my favorite was being a pastor. Uh huh. Because you're dealing with the real people. Right. right. It's challenging, but it's also rewarding. You're there for people while someone is being born, when somebody is dying. You're there almost in the whole lifespan of the individual. I think there's a lot of interaction that occurs with families and individuals when you're dealing as a pastor. 
if you allow it. You know, let's face it, like any other job, you can just say, I'm not going to do any of that. But if you take your job seriously, if you take your vocation seriously, then I think you're bound to reach out to those who need your help. If you were to, and this gets to, uh, again, we're talking about the various jobs within the church, uh, Father Joe Grimaldi, if somebody out there was thinking about the vocation of becoming a priest and going through the process, you could tell them to expect, based on just the little bit we've heard in this podcast, you're going to wear a whole lot of hats, correct? Yes, and I think we've covered that. In other we parts. have, but do they cover that in the seminary? Yes and no. I think the seminary is, they concentrate mostly on theology, theology but they right. also do training at the same time simultaneously so that... Uh, you know, they have meetings where they explain different things to the young people and so on and so forth. I think you really don't know until you're put into the situation. You're learning on the job. Now, see, one of the things I hear from the businessmen, they wish that the pastors had thorough business training because Makes sense. they're operating a big plant yeah we've talked about that yeah. a couple of times the fact that it's you're you're managing a large company is what exactly you, you know exactly and with, you have to know the, all of the aspects and you're dealing with lots of employees and the employees are the parishioners as well that's another thing so uh-huh. well yeah yeah not always but you're dealing with a lot of employees you're dealing with organizational abilities that you should have yeah. uh, so there's a lot of things that you're doing. When someone is sent out to to actually work, a young person, that's when he starts learning what to do, and that's where he has to make some decisions. Yeah. Do I just slough off and not do a good job, or do I do a good job and put myself into it as much as I can? You never get a day off. That's the one thing priests never get a day off yeah especially if you don't know how to say no yeah. but anyway well ladies and gentlemen <laughs> here's meet the gentleman that has never learned how to say no to now, anyone at I, any time and i think it's important that you uh that you do take time okay? yeah i think it is now even if it's on the calendar as day off what I don't like, and I don't know how to handle it. Okay, Thursday. Let's say Thursday's my day off. Somebody comes into the office. He or she is crying because they've lost a child. And so the secretary calls Father So-and-so. Uh, so-and-so is here to see you if they can. But I see it's your day off. Now, what do you say? Oh, it's my day off. I'm not coming down. Yeah. <laughs> so how can you handle that? I mean, I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. But you can't just slough it off as if nothing's going on. Well, you don't, at least. No, I try not to. At do. least. Uh, and we... there are lots of people that don't either. I, I, I'm no uh, big example. But anyway. You're a perfect example. Yeah, what other what other questions do you have? <laughs> That's it. That's all I got in my tank for you, mister, because I know that you're busy. But I really appreciate it. The hardest working man in the uh, church today, ladies I and wish, gentlemen. I wish, It's I wish. Father Joe Grimaldi. Boy, the little bit of uh, information that I get from you in the kitchen before we start to do this. <laughs> we have a little kitchen here at the WKEN studios, and we just sort of sit out there and chit-chat a little bit. And you brought up the fact that you know, you were a cop. And I went, what? You know, and I'm going to find out how close you, you were to becoming a bishop. <laughs> and, you know, it's never say never. <laughs> never say never. At 78, they don't want you. Do you know how <laughs> cool it would be for me to be close friends with a bishop? This is great. Depends so. on who the bishop was. But anyway. <laughs> uh, I can't thank you enough. I This one was a lot of fun. So I'm sorry we just sort of threw it out there, but I think this is a good one, a good one. And I thank you for your time, Father Joe Grimaldi. I've enjoyed it, so thank you. All right, you'll be well now. Okay, peace. All right, peace. All right listen, don't pat me down, okay? I'm going to walk slowly backwards now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Father Joe Grimaldi podcast. Thank you. Looking forward to it. 
This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.